folks, Guns Gear on Target Training out here in Oregon. Before we get started, I want to thank all of you who have helped this channel grow. We are within 1,500 or so uh, subscribers needed to hit the 100,000 subscriber mark. I am so grateful to each and every one of you who has supported the channel, and especially to those who have weighed in and shared content and provided different perspectives. I learn from all of you every single time I get a comment, and I really appreciate that feedback. All right, enough of me talking about that stuff. Let's talk about the Smith & Wesson M&P response carbine in 9mm that uses M&P 9mm double stack magazines. So this review is a range review. We will be talking about my experiences during the break-in period with the M&P response carbine. I shot this carbine at short and shorter distances than I would have liked, but I was limited this particular day with the range of avail availability. So I was working a lot of drills that were really, you know, 15 yards and in. The maximum distance on this range is about 18 yards. So I did some, you know, bench shooting from there to zero the red dot and just confirm that. What my takeaway from the time on the range was Smith & Wesson did a really nice job designing this particular carbine. One of the things that was immediately noticeable to me was the quality of the trigger. Nice, clean, clear break, great reset, um, and it provided very good accuracy. Again, I, I get it, guys. We're shooting at short distances, and I'm sure some of you are like, well, it's a carbine. You shouldn't be shooting from 10 yards. That gives you no idea. Fair enough. Fair enough. And we will follow up with some additional uh, video shooting the carbine at greater distances, including 25 and 50 yards. And frankly, that's for a nine millimeter carbine, like that to me is its intended purposes. Maybe I'll get it to a hundred yard range and see what we get. I'm not expecting, you know, this thing to be a tack driver, right? It's just not the right caliber and not the right setup to be that tack dri driver, that sub MOA, one inch MOA. It's just not gonna be. Still, it was a joy to shoot. Very, very uh, soft, mild recoil. And yes, it's a blowback design, but I'm telling you, it was fantastic. So when I was shooting it, some of the things I was really appreciating was how easy it was to keep the carbine, you know, of course, within nine millimeter, right? And to run this, to keep the carbine right back on point uh, and bring that red dot right to where I was aiming. Very easy to get good groups and, you know, combat effective hits in the upper chest area, right, at six, with that sort of six inch diameter on the target that you'll see here. And follow-up shots were very easy. The way the safety set up, again, it is an AIR style fire control system. It is super easy. And the, the things like the safety, manipulating the safety, it's very distinct on, off, on, off. It, it, it is just well designed. The mag release, like you talk about mags popping out. When you hit this button, which is right above where the trigger well is here, right at the very top, you hit that, that mag just jumps out. Fabulous design. Like it just really works. Other things, of course, the standard ping pong battle. I was running it sort of two ways. One, using the charging handle, just racking that back and also just hitting the ping pong paddle when I wanted to um, bring that bolt forward and pick up another round. So the, the carbine functioned very, very well. When I put a suppressor on it, this is a Banish 45 suppressor that I was running, and this particular um, firearm with the Blazer, 115 grain aluminum cased ammunition, I was getting failures to feed.
I'm shooting a 115 Blazer aluminum ammunition, and I've had two failures to from that. With any of the other brass case ammunition, no problem whatsoever. So I think, at least with the suppressor on, it does not want to feed this Blazer aluminum ammunition. So now this happened with several different magazines. When I tried other 115 grain ammunition with, with the suppressor on, no problems whatsoever. I then shot 124 grain suppressed, 147 grain suppressed, all with standard brass casings, some reloads, some you know new factory ammo. Everything functioned flawlessly. I think I put 300 rounds through it, and the only stoppages that happened twice while the you know suppressor was on the carbine was that particular braze, laser ammunition. Again, I've shot that for years, you know, shot cases and cases and cases of it. It's good, it's reliable, it's inexpensive. But when with my suppressor and this particular carbine, I was getting those uh, failures to feed from the magazine. And you would see a round that was partially in. And again, I think what was happening is because of the suppressor, the blow blowback design was not driving the bolt all the way to the rear so it was driving it part way enough to eject the spent casing but then it not far enough back that the new round could fully seat in the chamber so i still haven't cleaned it <laughs> and uh, let me give you a close-up here it's really dirty and this dirt uh, and grime and carbon is mainly when you run a suppressor, it's just slightly uh, going to be slightly dirtier in the experience. Uh, double taps, um, quick shots, all of the things that you know I want in a carbine uh, worked, no problem. Great, reliable, um, you know, good accuracy again from 15 yards and in. So you can all push back on me and say, "Oh, but you should never. You don't need a carbine." At 15, you know, meters and 15 yards, like, that's ridiculous. Just use a pistol. Hey, dude, like, here's where I'm coming from. When I have a carbine, it is so much easier to shoot. And then part of the, the drills that I was running, I was running my M&P, you know, 2.0, the um, 4.25 inch barrel with the metal frame. Uh, you know, a newer design that came out last year. And, and you know, again, I can shoot that because I shoot that pistol a lot. But when I did <laughs> the same drills with a carbine, and anybody who understands this, this is why a long gun is often superior, again, depends on the mission and, and what you're trying to do, but it's often superior, especially in being able to shoot quickly and accurately, or, or and, or, teaching new shooters who have not had the experience of how to shoot a, a, a firearm to to learn um it's there's no felt recoil of any significance and you can have immediate success for a new shooter right out of the gate particularly with a red dot right so you're setting them up you say see the dot see the target right when you come up on target bring that dot to where your eye is fire <laughs> it's that simple so in the video Throughout uh, this video, you will see uh, various, you know, me shooting from different perspectives and, and different uh, views, both in front of the camera, to the side of the camera, and at distance. And at distance, again, I was using a bench. I was using a rest, you know, got this very comfortable kind of setup on that and was able to get, you know, very good accuracy again at, at a short distance. But still, I, I'm like... Man, this thing, this thing works. We will follow up this video with a video on other types of um, pistol caliber carbines. So we'll, we'll, you'll see us talk about this, the M&P. You'll see us talk about a Foxtrot Mike 16 inch, which is really a lovely uh, carbine, as well as a lever action carbine and um, the Ruger, uh, PCC, which is another fine little handy carbine. So for me, guys, 
<laughs> if I could only own, you know, if I was like one of those people, I was like, okay, I want a reliable pistol that I know I can use. And I want those same magazines, whatever magazines I had to be able to work in a long gun, in a carbine, then a pistol caliber carbine like this Smith & Wesson response carbine is a great option to consider. Well, folks, I really appreciate each and every one of you, uh, the time that you take to watch the video, the comments that you share. So please let me know your thoughts. What do you think of, of, of carbines? What do you think of pistol caliber carbines? You know, would you, if you could only have two uh, firearms, right, a long gun and a handgun, what, what carbine, pistol caliber carbine, would you select and why? Because there are lots of options out there, folks. Tons of options that you can go out and look and find something that fits your budget, fits your needs, while recognizing like this is not the same as a center fire carbine in 762 by 39 or 556. Uh, <laughs> or, well, we could go on, uh, on down the list. But a center fire uh, rifle carbine is going to give you. Uh, obviously much, much more reach, and it has a real benefit in many cases. But in a urban environment, a home protection environment, the velocity of a nine millimeter at you know, 11, 1200 feet per second is far, far less likely to over penetrate through multiple barriers unless you're using ball ammo but if you're using defensive ammo it's not typically going to leave your house and then proceed through the next house in the next house um like a 308 or 30 out six or some 556 five, right so this again has many applications that are worth considering well folks enough of me talking thank you so much for supporting the channel finally and as always, stay safe.